and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I am in a very good mood because today I get to do a puzzle by one of my favourite constructors in the world, Codec. And Codec has very kindly seemed to have constructed a puzzle using my favourite new rule set for Sudoku, this region sum lines constraint. Uh, I've only done maybe three of these puzzles in my life, but every single one of them has been a total joy. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so convinced that this is a good form of Sudoku that I want to make an app um, with these puzzles in it at some stage. Um, but we'll have a look at, um, I'll, I'll read the rules of this one in just a moment. I've got a few things to mention first. Um, if you enjoy cryptic crosswords, I released a video on the channel earlier of me solving Dave Gorman, the British comedian's um, new cryptic crossword, which appeared in The Independent yesterday. Um, it's, a, it's a great puzzle, as always, from Dave, so definitely uh, check that out. Um, what else? I am going to have a go at this puzzle for the channel. This is called Inception, and it's by Matthias Martinka. And I asked yesterday in the video whether there was any interest in seeing an attempt at this puzzle because because I wanted to do it. I was going to do it, you know, privately rather than on the channel anyway, because it's such a remarkable idea. Um, but what made me nervous about it is that you know, it's got a lot of rules basically, uh, but it's an incredible idea. Effectively, you have to solve this grid first as a Hitori puzzle, then as a, an Akari puzzle, then as a Nurikabi puzzle, then as a Killer Sudoku, and then as a Star Battle. I mean, that is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's got a 100% rating, only three stars out of five for difficulty, but I was worried in a video people would get bored of sort of explanations of the rules to all of these logic puzzles which some of you out there I know will be familiar with um, because you'll have done a Hitori before for example so I'm, I am going to do that and I'll release that as a bonus video in the coming days assuming I can solve it um, what else do I need to mention oh yeah uh, we've um, uh, we have a PO box now if you're interested in getting in contact with us uh, by a means that is not electronic you can now do that there's a link under the video and on Patreon, of course, we have our quite approachable Sudoku hunt. We are way over 1,000 correct entries for that, which is, I mean, it's quite remarkable. It is quite remarkable. So very well done to all those of you who've managed to get through all those puzzles. That is brilliant stuff. And I think hopefully it means we're doing something right on the channel in terms of explaining our thought processes. Um, and helping everybody to sort of up their Sudoku game. Um, and also, if you got stuck last month on the Star Wars hunt, we've now released the second trilogy of videos. So this is episodes one, two, and three. I didn't have to remind Mark of the names of those films, which is surprising given I had to remind him of the name of Return of the Jedi. Um, but yeah, so so anyway, those, those videos are up now on Patreon as well. Um, with all that said and done, Let's get on with Region Sun Lines by Codec. I haven't done a Codec puzzle for ages. I do not know why this is so. Um, but anyway, these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. For each line, digits on the line have an equal sum, n, within each box the line passes through. If a line passes through the same box more than once, each individual segment of such a line within that box sums to n separately. So... I'm just looking at that last bit of the rules. I've not seen an equal sum lines puzzle before. Um, it looks like it's applying in box four here. But let's talk about the general principle. Let's use the top line because it looks it looks like it goes across three lines with quite some quite some cells involved. What we're being told here is that those those four cells will have a sum. We don't know what that sum is. Let's say it's 20. If these sum up to 20, then these four cells, which are the cells on the line in box two of the Sudoku, those four cells would also sum to 20. And then these cells, which are the four cells or five cells on the line in box three, would also sum to 20. So in fact, what you could do if you wanted is do this coloring at the start and note that the blue the sum of the blues is equal to the sum of the yellows is equal to the sum of the oranges. We just don't know what that sum is yet. Now, taking a look at this extension to the rules and how it applies in box four, we're being told that those digits there um, 
have a sum. We don't know what we don't know what it is. Well, in fact, I do know what it is, <laughs> but, but but that's because I can see what it is uh, using the secret. I'll explain that when I get solving. Um, but those three sums cells there will have to sum to the same as those three sums will have to say it cell, sum to the same as those three cells. So each of these strips will have a sort of Neapolitan ice cream will have to have the same sum. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And in fact, I'm going to start here because it's a good excuse to talk about the secret. And the secret is that any complete box of a Sudoku, indeed any complete row and any complete column, will contain the digits 1 to 9. And if you add up the digits 1 to 9 once each, you get 45. So let's think about the number 45 in the context of the equal sum lines rules here. We know those three digits sum up to a number. Let's call it n. These three digits sum up to n. And these three digits sum up to, you've guessed it, n. So this box, which sums to 45, can also be expressed as 3n. Well, if 3n equals 45, n equals 15. So each of these is 15. And as Maverick flies past my window, Maverick's been sort of, I don't know, he's obviously been flying to different places in the world recently. Um, but now he's back to buzz past my window. Um, anyway, these sum to 15. So I guess that means they sum to 15. Uh, yeah, these sum to 15. In fact, all, ah, right, I see what's going on. Right, this is interesting. They sum to 15. Can I use, oh yeah, you can see the purple against the purple background. And they sum to 15 as well. So why do I think this is interesting? What am I going to use as my color for this one? Hang on, I can use orange. Um, yeah, this is definitely interesting because if each of these dominoes adds to 15, well, we know what these digits have to be because there are only two ways of making 15 in two digits. It's either 6, 9 or it's 7, 8. So in fact, these squares are a 6, 7, 8, 9 quadruple. These squares are a 6, 7, 8, 9 quadruple. And we can go further than that because we can, because these two cells add up to 15 individually, and these two cells add up to 15 individually, the nature of the gray 15 here must be different from the nature of the red 15 here. So these digits are effectively what we're being told is that these digits are purple or we could put that differently and say that the purple digits are gray uh, which is going to be better I don't know let's make or maybe it's better not to use purple if we don't have to so I'll make those gray um, and therefore these digits the orange is becoming red as a result of that logic and that's because, uh, just if, if you're not seeing why that is, just imagine this was a 6-9 pair. Neither of these cells could be a 6 or a 9 now. We know they add up to 15, but we can't put 6 or 9 here. So this has to be 7-8, which means this has to be 7-8. So this is a different version of 15 to the red. And therefore, well, let's put the 6, 7, 8, 9 in there just to complete things. And think about what we do next. So, right, okay, this is already looking quite interesting to me, and I'm now worrying if I've colored this in incorrect. Now, I haven't, I mean, it's not that I've colored it in incorrectly, but I'm wondering whether I've colored it in inefficiently. I'm just wondering if this puzzle is about ups and downs rather than anything else because all of those digits now have to be ones twos threes fours and fives ones twos threes fours and fives add up to 15 well if those digits add up to 15 because of the the rule which says that these digits this digit must be the same sum as those two and this digit must be the same sum of those three these two digits must add up to 15 which means these are also six seven eight or nine and look at this digit that digit is, is like an arrow in arrow sudoku it is basically the sum of three different numbers that appear in row 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 six or column or box five whichever you like they clearly can't be a repeated digit in those three these three cells so the minimum they can be would be one two and three 
which add up to 6. So this square is also 6, 7, 8 or 9, which means that square is red. These add up to 15 and they're not red, so they're grey. Um, now, what does that mean? So the whole of this row is now low digits. Yeah, I'm actually going to get rid of my um, my colouring in box in box number four because I want to use these colours. I think. So what I want to do. Actually, maybe I should be careful as well. If I'm going to start colouring things in all over the grid, maybe it would be better for people if I used colourblind friendly combinations. Uh, how am I going to do that? I'm going to do that by... I will switch the colouring, I think, to orange and blue. So let's make... Let's make all of the high digits blue. I'm going to sneeze. I mustn't sneeze. That will completely blow people's eardrums. Don't sneeze, Simon. Right, I think I've managed to resist it. Um, so these these are going to be high digits. Maybe I'll change the red flashes there to something a bit brighter so I can see it more clearly. Right, so hopefully people will be able to detect there's a difference between a blue yellow and a blue grey. And now what I want to do is to, is to use a different colour for low digits because I can do all of this now. Look, I can get all of these have to be low because in column four, I've got four high digits. In row seven, I've got four high digits. And in box seven, I've got four high digits. So everything I've done here, all of the orange squares have to be a digit that's one, two, three, four, or five. Yeah, row three. Same thing, there we go. And, hmm, okay, and what does that mean? We've got, well, if this was a six, these would be low, and this, these, all four of those would have to be high. Which might be possible. Um, these two squares. Ah, okay, hang on. Right. Th yeah, this line is a little bit interesting in terms of just its structure look, because what it's effectively telling us is that those two digits are the same digit. Uh, can we do something by Sudoku with that? Maybe we can't, actually. We know that this digit, whatever it is, is the sum of two low numbers, but that doesn't mean it is itself low. Because we could have we could have one and two adding to three, or we could have four and five adding to nine. So actually we don't know the nature of this digit. At least I don't think we do. The, ah, now we've also got that digit is the same as that digit. Ah, so that is orange. Right, here we go. That's orange. So it's possible if this if this is a 6 or a 7, or indeed, actually, if that's a 6, 7, or an 8, these have to be orange. And we'd have four oranges in this line. And it wouldn't be possible for both of those to be orange. Uh, hmm, hang on a minute, let me think about this. This digit is the same as that digit. Ah, right, okay, well that's blue. This is very nice. Right, okay, let's look at this. Um, I will use, let me just highlight these in green for a moment. These two, because, because on this line here, we know that whatever these two sum up to is the same as this, and it's the same as this. Um, these two digits must be the same. But whatever this digit is, by Sudoku now, it can't go in that T pentomino. And it can't go on its own arrow. If I think about these in terms of arrows, if I put green 
in one of those two squares, the other square would have to be a zero, and that won't work. So actually, we can rule green out of all of those seven cells in box nine. So green is down here in one of those two squares, which means green by Sudoku is blue. <laughs> so yet another strange sentence. But that means that green we can get rid of and replace with blue. Oh, this is beautiful. Good grief. Blue is yellow. Well, it's the blue. It's this one. It's, well, it's the counterpart of this one. It's, it's definitely not grey because there are already two greys in box eight. So that's yellow. That's yellow. These two squares add up to 15, which means those two squares add up to 15. Uh, I don't know if I can do anything with that. There's a, there's a lot of um, sort of algebra going on between row 7 and row 6. These two cells sum up to 15. So that means those four cells sum up to 15. Does that mean... Yeah, they sum up to 15, and one of them is high. So, am I going crazy? Although you can't now have a high digit on here, can you? Because if... I think I might be getting... I think I might be getting confused, but let me just try go through the logic I just did in my head again. So I've got 15 here. And I've got, therefore, I've got 15 of these two cells, which don't see each other, but they must be different. Because this one is the same as that one, and this one sees that one. So these two add up to 15. But we know that these three are the same as this one. So these four add up to 15, one of which is a high digit. So if I had another high digit along here, and I suppose the only high digit I could ever have along here would be a 6 if this was a 9. But if there was another high digit, these two high digits would add up to a minimum of 6 plus 7, which is 13. And therefore those two squares would have to both add up, both be a 1, which won't work. You can't repeat 1 in a row of a Sudoku. So these are low digits, and these are high digits. Oh, now, hang on, what does that mean? So, so, ah, yeah, so, so this digit is now a blue digit, because that's a blue digit, <laughs> right? So we're getting, we are getting somewhere here. Oh, now, do I know what colour this digit is? I don't know. Uh... It's the same as this one, which could be a yellow digit. Well, that's the same as that yellow. Hang on. So that's this yellow digit is the same as that yellow digit. Don't know. I don't know. And what do we say? These four cells have to add up to 15. And those five cells have to add up to 15. Oh, that's weird. Right, okay, so... Hang on, is that right? These five cells add up to 15. But those two cells are the same as that cell. Those two cells are the same as that cell. And that cell is the same as that cell. So those three cells add up to 15. So these are not the same colour. That's beautiful. Right, let's ju I'm just going to double check that as well, because this is getting quite confusing. This domino definitely is the same as that. So what I'm trying to do is to partition the end of row 7 up, because I know that these digits add up to 15, because I've got 6, 7, 8, 9 at the start of the row. 6, 7, 8, 9 add up to 30. 45 minus 30 is 15. So these have to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, adding up to 15. But... So if we try and partition it up, this, these two digits are the same as that one. These two digits are the same as that one. And that digit is the same as that one. So these have to add up to 15, including two high digits. But also, 
if this was yellow, those two would themselves add up to 15. So this must be grey. And that square's small. It's a maximum. Well, if I make those, if I minimise these with sixes and sevens, that would leave this able to be a two. So this is a two or a one. This is a two or a one. That ah, that's grey now. By reflecting, by using the line there. So now there's a grey in one of those two. Oh, it's getting a bit dicey in terms of pencil marking, isn't it? Oh. Ah, but that... Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. There is... I'm now spotting loads of things going on. But amongst them is that this... Where does this digit go in box 5? Because that digit is the same as that digit. Because it can't be this digit because of Sudoku. So those two are the same. Which means there's a blue digit in this column. Well, blue is not grey. Blue yellow is not grey. So that's got to be blue yellow. But that's different to this digit. Oh, this is so clever. It's ridiculously clever. Right. Now, where does this digit go in box six? Now, at first blush, we might say it could be the same as this digit, but we know it's not. Because this digit and this digit add up to 15. They are different. So this digit, which is the same as this digit, I should probably give this a different... I'll give it a green flash so we can see that all of these three are the same. This has not got a green flash. So that digit can only go there. It can't appear on its own line or you'd have to accompany it with a zero. So that is a blue, yellow, green digit. So this, this is now a blue, yellow pair. So those two digits add up to 15. Ah. Right, and that's interesting for these two digits in box 9, because now, yeah, so this is a blue-yellow combination, but just by Sudoku, because we've got blue-yellow there, blue-yellow there, so blue-yellow in box 9 is in two of these three squares, and we have a blue-yellow here ruling out this one. So this is blue and yellow. These are orange because they're, we've done all our blues in this box. Oh, four, no. So we've got one blue up there. Uh, oh, yeah, and that's that. Yeah, this is what, what I was thinking. I was looking at this one or two, and I was noting this couldn't be a one, two, three triple anymore, or indeed a seven, one, two, four. So that is a high, a high yellow. So green... green with blue and yellow is an eight or a nine so that one is a low a low yellow which means that one is a a low yellow why is that difficult to say i do not know so that must be a high yellow this must be a low yellow that must be a high yellow that must be a high yellow this this must be a low yellow and this must be a high yellow and what does that mean this ah so that means that must be a low no it i was about to say that must be a low gray that's not true if that was eight that was six and that was one these three digits would add up to 15 and that would have been a high gray so one of those is is a yellow six seven uh, what else can we do with this then i can get rid of my green flash now i've used it let's keep things more straightforward don't quite see how I'm going to do more colouring in the bottom of the grid. Probably, oh, I guess I do, sorry. Look at this digit. That's a blue-grey digit. So where's that going in box nine? It's got to go there. 
So that's blue gray. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. Is it the same as that one or do we not know? I don't know if we know that. Ah, ah, but now I've got to put lots of high digits on the line in box three. That, that looks problem. Ah, wow, okay, yes, that is going to put pressure on this box. Look, yeah, this is very interesting. I've got to put, by Sudoku now, these digits cannot be blue-yellow at all, and they can't be that blue-grey, and they can't be orange. So these, those three digits, these three digits in column 9, all have to go on the line in box 3, along with two other digits. And they have to add up to only four digits... Oh, a four digits which can't... Yeah, we can't put more than two high digits in those four digits either. Because we've already got 15 in those two digits which are not on the line. So the maximum I can put on the line... The absolute maximum I can put on the line in this box would be two high digits which will add to 15 because they're, they're both going to be yellow plus a 5 and a 4, so that would be 9. So 9 plus 15 is 24. So, yeah, that, right, this is it. This is it. There's, there's, this is absolutely crucial. So so we can do this either way around. Let's do it. In fact, I'm going to reverse this. What's, what's the absolute minimum that these digits can add up to? Well, it's going to be an 8-9 pair here and put... Sorry, not an 8-9 pair. It's going to be 15 here plus adding adding to a 6. That's 21. So I can put 21 in terms of blue digits on this line. And then I could put two low orange digits as well. Let's say a 1 and a 2. So the absolute minimum this line is in box 3 is 24. Which means the absolute minimum those squares are in, in box 1 is 24. 24 and 15 is 39 as an absolute minimum. But remember the box adds to 45. That means these three cells have got to be a maximum value of six. Well, they have to be a one, two, three, triple then. Um, I got that the other way around by working out this line had to be four, five plus 15. But I think it's more beautiful to think of it in terms of ones, twos and threes for some reason. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that, well, that's huge. That's absolutely huge because now we know... We know that square's a 1 or a 2, which gives us a 1-2 pair in column 8. Because we know that the orange digit, there's two orange digits in those five digits, and they are both a 1 and a 2. And then the other digits have to include... Yes, okay. We know that it's got 15 in terms of yellow digits on it, but we needed that to be a 6 to make that work. Which actually disambiguates my... Um, my yellow digits because we need that to be low this is such clever setting it really is because we need this to be low in order to put a six on this line that determines yellow as seven eight we now know that that's a seven which means that's an eight which means that's a seven that's an eight that's a seven that's an eight that's an eight we well we know that yes okay we know that they are seven and eight now even if we can't disambiguate the order we know that these are now six and nine and we can disambiguate the order there whoa six nine we know these are six and nine we know these are six and nine we know that aha we know there must be a one on an eight arrow i mean i know it's not an arrow but you know what i mean these three digits add up to eight if we don't include a one in them there'll be two three four which add up to nine that's too many so there must be a one in there so that's got to be a two that's got to be a two these add up to 15 so that's got to be a six so these were the same that's got to be a six these squares have got to be a seven nine pair six six these add up to six and they don't include a two so they've got to be one and five these have got to be 3, 4 to complete the row, and 3 and 4 do add up to 7, so it looks like we're on to something here. 1s, 5s, and 9s into those squares by Sudoku. 
So these squares are going to be twos, threes, and fours. Uh, ah, okay. So this six arrow now is summing those two cells. So that can never be a three, or you'd have to put double three along the line. So this is a two, four pair. That's a three by Sudoku. So this is a one, five pair to make nine. And also to complete the box, one, th five, and three, do make nine. Three comes out of this cell at the top. And all of a sudden, I feel hopeful. I feel like we might be, these are two, three, and four. There's definitely a three in this domino. Nine, nine. Don't know. Uh, we've got to put a six on this line, don't we? We've got to put six, seven. Yes, in fact, what I might do is just label this line up because I know it's got six, seven, eight on it and I know it's got a one or a two on it. Oh, and in fact, look, there's a two here, so that's a one. So now I know it's just got a two on it and we can do some tidying up of the Sudoku. There's a two, seven, eight triple in this column. There's a six, seven, eight triple in this column. Why do I feel like I've got two? Oh, I see why. Okay, so I've got to put three, four, five, and nine into these squares. Oh, look, yeah, this eight arrow, well, eight line, that can't be two, six, or one, seven, so that's three, five. I don't know. Okay, so that's four or nine by Sudoku, I think. And that's just, the way I'm getting that is I'm noting that in this column, I have the digits one, two, six, seven, and eight approximately placed. So I need three, four, five, and nine to complete the column. And this square can't be a three or a five. So I think it's just left with the options of being four and nine. But I can't see whether that's resolvable. It probably is, and I'm just missing something. Ah, nine, look, has to find a home at the top domino of column nine by Sudoku. So that's not a nine. Ah, beautiful. So where does nine go in this box? It's got to go in one of those two cells where it sees this seven, nine pair. So now we can color these. That's got to become yellow. That's got to become gray. Uh, okay, that's, well, it's quite interesting, but I don't think it's resolved things. These cells in box one, we know are four, five, seven, and eight. We know that's not seven or eight. Do we know, can we do any better than that? I'm not sure. I mean, one thing I can see is that I've got fours in those two and fours in these three. Oh, goodness me, there's now ambulance or police outside. The... I should never have opened my window. It's such a asking for trouble. There's got to be a four in this string of digits. I'm just wondering whether we can, because we know each of these strings adds up to 15, whether I can do anything with that. So this is either going to be 429 or 456. Mm, either would be very useful. I've got a 6-9 pair in this column. Yeah, so this column needs to have a 3, doesn't it, on the line? So does that matter? So the other two... Yeah, this is, oh, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. So this line, which has to add up to 15, needs two digits on it that add up to 12. That can't be a 3, 9, because that would repeat the 3 in this string. Can't be a 4, 8, because the 4 is over there. So this is 3, 5, 7, which means that's not 7 at the top. That's a 1 at the bottom, so that's a 5. Uh, oh, that's also getting rid of 5 up there, of course. So we can get rid of 5. We've got a 4, 8, which gives us the 2, gives us the 4. This square now, oh, look, that square's got to be a 5, and that's got to be a 7 by Sudoku. 
Okay. So surely this line is determined, or maybe it maybe come back to this one because we know it can't have five six on it. Yes, that's got to be two four nine, which places the two in box one, places the six and the nine as well, places the nine and the six below it. Now hopefully these three digits will add up. Yes, they're 1, 6 and 8. They will add up to 15. So the world does seem to work. That's got to be a 6. That's got to be an 8. That's got to be a 1. Yes, we can colour these and we ought to. Uh, I'm very happy to do that. That deserves to be yellow. That deserves to be grey. OK, can we do better? There's got to be a 7 in that string. So it's got to be in the central position. There's got to be a 9 in one of those two. Why can't I see where that is? I can really. It's got to be in this one by Sudoku because there's a nine pencil marked over here. So we end up with a two four pair. And if we look at row five, this square has to be a two or a four. Oh, look, and I, and I know, do I? Yes, I do know. Look at the eight. The eight arrow here, I know it's an eight line, but you know what I mean. It can't have it can't be one two five. So that's one three four. And therefore that's a five and that's a three. And this is a two, and that's a two, and that's a four, and that should be a five. And everything is coming together <laughs> rather beautifully. This column needs ones, threes, and fours at the top of it which we don't seem to be able to resolve. The two must go there in box number three. Seven, eight pair in the column. Uh, these squares have got to be a two, three, four uh, triple. And we can see that two must go in there in terms of that, those options. So there are three, four pair. Those have got to be a five, nine pair at the top which places a one down here. This square should be three or four, can't be three. So that's four, that's three, that's four, that's nine. We need a one in this box, which has to go there. Okay, so now I'm slightly, oh, this nine. I was wondering how we were gonna finish off this column, but we can do it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now, okay, this is going, this is going okay. Come on. How do we finish this? We have, we can delete the one corner mark from there. We can, two, no, this must be done. Why can't I just do it? Oh, it's that, that digit there. That's a four, that's a three, that's a two. So this is not four, this is not three. Why is this still not done? Ah! Oh, maybe it's because I've not used the line up here. Yeah, okay, so we're going to be able to work out this line 6, 7, 8 plus 1 plus 2 is 24. So these four squares add up to 24 to keep the, or each line adding up to the same number. 24 plus 17 is 41. So these two squares have to add up to four and they have to be a one, three pair. And that's very, very cute. So this is a one, three pair and that has become a four, which means that's a four and that's an eight. That's an eight, that's a seven, that's a six. That's a seven, that's an eight. Good grief. Um, this three is nice. That's giving me a one, three, three, one, that should be a five or a nine, can't be a nine. So that's five, that's five, that's nine. Nine can only go here in the middle box. That's got to be a six, therefore. The one up here gets me the one and the five and the four and the one and the three, and that's the puzzle, I think. Now I've not done my I've not done my highlighting. Let me just check I've got it right. I have. Super. Um, and we can now finish off. Let's do all the low digits first. And then we can tidy up the rest of things after that. There we go. Hopefully I didn't lose my army there. So everything else has to be blue. And once we've done the blues, we want to find all, oh, it won't let me do that. I want to find all the sevens and the eights. 
and give them the moniker of yellowness and then all of the sixes and nines and award them the mantle of greyness and I've almost certainly missed one out which will infuriate people but anyway I think that's how to solve the puzzle well it was we did it we did it together we did it and it was absolutely beautiful so let's just have a think about what we had to do we had to we used the secret very quickly and we got these these 15s identified didn't we and then we could see there were more 15s that emerged in this column yeah but then it got tricky yes okay first thing we had to do was to get that this was blue and that really helped because there's there's a lot of clever geometry codex built in between these six cells and those five cells and there were some restrictions we could use to sort of hone in on the values of some of those digits it's such a beautiful rule set this it really is it's got so much potential. I mean, it's it's like it's got a bit of arrow Sudoku logic about it, um, but it allows these strange geometric patterns to emerge. I really like it. I really like it. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it too. Do let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And now I'm going to go off and have a go at Inception. See you later for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.